Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our returning listeners, and welcome if it's your first time listening. Yeah, we are thrilled you are here listening to our fifth episode of the Lion Pridecast, a podcast created by the Lansing Unified School District 469, located in Lansing, Kansas. The purpose of this podcast is to inform our Lansing stakeholders, being our community members, students, and staff about all things education. We are your hosts. I am Miles Aza, Director of Teaching and Learning in Lansing USD 469. And I am Sharon Burns, the Director of Communications and Marketing. So during our last episode, we interviewed our intermediate school principal, Mr. Mal- Martin Altieri. Learned how to say his that's name Altieri. during that episode. Yeah, you said it right there. Yes. Good job. So for today's episode, I'm going to put Miles here on the hot seat. Yes, I am. I'm and nervous. He, I'm yeah, nervous. Martin. Be. Martin killed it last. He time. did. Yep. You're going to have to bring it. Big shoes. Big shoes <laughs> so I want you to focus on a few topics that you are passionate about. We've talked about this, but. Chiefs. Yeah, right. Yankees. Right. Oh, no, not sports. Oh. Education. Oh, yes. yeah, this is that podcast, isn't yes. it? Okay. Education. Yeah, before we get started with that, could you share a little bit about your background since our audience doesn't know much about you? I know they got to know me, um, episode three. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. now it's your turn. So tell them about your background and how you ended up here in the wonderful Lansing USD 469. Sure. And now I'm even more nervous because Martin was last time and he did fantastically. And now it's me. Mm-hmm. being interviewed and mm-hmm. you did very well we got a lot of positive feedback thank you very much to our listeners who reached out and so and dr penrose don't forget alan you're gonna make it which one's dr penrose yeah. no I'm just kidding. <laughs> alan you did well you did well and for your top three your yes. top three so far <laughs> there's been three uh so a little bit about me um it's my second year in lansing i love it here um amazing colleagues to work with great people um <laughs> yeah amazing colleagues uh, at all the buildings um just kidding, you share. You're great. Everybody here at district office has been amazing. Um, and I love our students. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think that it's cliche to be like, we have the best students. We have the best students. Our kids are out of this world. Right. Um, sorry to uh, other districts kids listening to right now. <laughs> um, so but back, my background, I started my career in the Kansas City, Kansas School District. I was a teacher at Washington High School. Um, I was an English teacher and I uh, really enjoyed it. And during my tenure there, I had a chance to be a reading interventionist. And toward the end, after I got my master's degrees, uh, my first one being in literature, liberal arts and literature, mm-hmm. it opened the door for me to uh, teach the dual credit um, lit and comp one, comp two classes. Mm-hmm. So that was fantastic. Mm-hmm. I got to teach all those courses. And to this day, I'm still adjuncting at the community college. Okay. So that was great. And then uh, I was approached about applying for an instructional coach position. Uh, so I did. And um, honored enough that they gave me the position. And I started working at F.L. Schlegel High School, also in KCK. And that's probably where I realized how much I love education. Like, I really have a passion for it. Mm-hmm. I knew I liked learning. I knew I liked teaching. But those two years of Schlegel really opened my eyes, plus the amount of uh, professional development and the relationships I made. Great. Um, an opportunity open for me to move to um, the district where I live in, actually Piper, mm-hmm. to be a secondary instructional coach. They'd never had an instructional coach. So I um, applied and I was the secondary instructional coach there for two years after Schlegel. And honestly, was doing great there and learning so much, but I got so lucky that this position opened up and I'm honored, like I said, that I'd uh, yeah. be able to join the ranks here. It's been, it's been fantastic. Yes, we love having you here. Thank Miles you. has been a very positive vibe here in the district office and the district as a whole. So thank you. Thank you for choosing Lansing. No, oh, that's my, my pleasure. You're, you're fantastic. Yeah. Here, like said. <laughs> so yeah, I'm hoping everyone listened to our last podcast with Martin. And if you haven't, I hope you'll go listen. back and listen <laughs> when we're done. Finish this episode. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Be a good one. Listen to me first. But then yeah, go back and listen to Martin. <laughs> but um, Miles referenced a book titled Focus mm-hmm. during that episode. And I know he um, has recommended all of our admin read it, which they are doing. We are so. doing a book study on it. So um, was this book recommended to you or how did you find it? How yeah. did you stumble upon it? I actually, I, yeah, I didn't stumble upon it. Luckily, my uh, quasi mentor, he's a friend of mine, but I call him my mentor. He was my first instructional coach, uh, Joe Graham, Dr. Joe Graham. He's the principal. Yeah, I love him. He's the principal at John Fisk Elementary in KCK. Mm-hmm. Um, if I didn't have him as a mentor, if I didn't have him as an instructional coach, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, I wouldn't be who I am today. Um, he's brilliant and I've learned so much from him. And he told me about Mike Schmoker's focus, mainly because I was getting so worked up about uh, initiatives and things on my plate and what to do. And he told me to take a deep breath and he told me Mike Schmoker's focus and read the book. Um, his principal, um, Joe's principal before I came, he wasn't the principal when I was there, was a real big fan. If you think I'm a big fan, this guy was a huge <laughs> fan of Mike Schmoker, uh, literally flew him out, picked him up at the airport wow. and had him come to the school for like PD days. Okay. 
Um, I wish I would be able to be there for that. But Mike Schmoker Focus, yeah, I read it once a year and it's okay. fantastic. Can you elaborate a little bit about what it's prepping? Yeah, for yeah. Well? Quick quick summary is that it's um it, it's it's all centered around the notion that we have we've strayed away about from what works in public education, what works in learning. Um, and that really there sh we need to focus on the three major things. The first one being a clear and concise curriculum. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one being um, sound instructional strategies that are effective. And the third one being authentic literacy. It's probably the one I love the most. The idea of reading, writing, and speaking and listening in all disciplines uh, to make us better readers, writers, critical thinkers, speakers, mm -hmm. debaters. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. And I've really been trying to make that happen here. The first one, the clear and concise curriculum, mm -hmm. that's the GVC work that we've been doing. Okay. Um, I guess. Can, yeah, can you go into what the that? GVC? GVC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes we get caught in yes, these acronyms and I forget not everybody knows. Non-educators. Absolutely. It, it's fun stuff. People, uh, I don't know, it's fun stuff. But people are like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. It's another acronym. But it actually is, is a good one. Uh, a guaranteed and viable curriculum means that every kid will learn the standards, uh, the skills that need to be taught during that class. Uh, or in that course or whatever it may be. That's the guaranteed part. So there's no more of that teacher lottery thing that we hear. Every kid is mm -hmm. getting what they deserve. The second one is the viable part that mm -hmm. a teacher can teach everything in a calendar year or in a school year that is on the pacing guide or in the curriculum. Um, you'd be amazed how many times I've talked to teachers and they're like, well, I would love to teach that or get to that, but I'm sorry, I ran out of time. The pacing okay. guide's too big. Well, we gotta change our pacing mm -hmm. guide then. We gotta prioritize because it's obviously not viable. Um, so I really love that viable part. And teachers really love that too, because they're always talking about there's too much, right. there's too much, and there is, there's too yeah. many standards. Right. Um, we have way more standards than we did 30 years ago. And I'm not mm -hmm. anti-standard at all, it's great. But sometimes I think that if we keep adding, what happens is, is that we're doing a quantity over quality kind right. of thing. And that's never good for kids. Right. So that's the GVC type okay. work. And, and, and um, thanks to the help of my instructional coaches and the teachers, We've, we're getting pretty close to having a K-12 GVC. That's the yes. goal by the end okay. of the year is have everything laid That's out on the weird. website. Thanks okay. to you. Put it on the website for me right. for K-5, and uh, we'll be good. Right. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Okay. So one thing that um, my fa family has benefited from is the um, the concept of recreational reading or the importance of it. So I have a fifth grader, Brooks. Um, Miles brought the uh, Sustained Silent Reading Initiative last school year. Um, it's called DIRT daily independent reading time. Um, Brooks loves it, and Brooks Good. also loves getting shout outs. So <laughs> this is another <laughs> episode we're talking, I think it's three for three now. Oh, but um, yeah, can you talk about that? Can you talk about the recreational reading, and why it's so important, yeah. what it is, you know, the dirt? Yeah, I, I think one of the best things that I ever, uh, the reason I love it so much is, is I'm a reader. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are, they don't, you know, they might say they're not readers and stuff, um, and I get that, but. I'm a reader, and I wouldn't be who I was if I wasn't a reader. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a quote um, by Jacques, Jacques Barzun. He's like a, um, he was a French American historian and author, and it says Jacques Barzun. Jacques Barzun. Barzun. Okay. I don't know if I'm saying it right. I just, okay. But I mean, I know, the, I know the quote. Yeah. That's why I like. It. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm saying it right. Okay. I'm French. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Uh, no, <laughs> no subject of study is more important than reading. All other intellectual powers depend on it. I always come back to my dad. My dad doesn't like to read fiction, but he loves to read nonfiction. Mm -hmm. My dad is brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, is a super smart guy. My mom is brilliant. Mm -hmm. And the reason they're both so smart is they're avid readers. Okay. Once again, my mom's the fictional reader. She's like me. I'm a uh -huh. fiction person. Um, but it doesn't really matter because the more you read, the more you're exposed to vocab, the more you're exposed to background knowledge, mm -hmm. the more you can build up something called schema. And it's just fascinating to me. At, and I want our kids to have that. Because you, if you know, if you think about it, you've never met somebody. I always like to say this, and I'm a Harry Potter nerd, so I'm allowed to say it. Like, <laughs> you never meet really like a, a stupid Harry Potter fan. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you never meet somebody who's like not, you know, able to handle something or do well on an assessment. You know, that whatever it may be, if they're an avid reader. Right. So I really want that to happen, and I just love the idea of our kids loving reading, mm -hmm. and that's the years that matter. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Mm -hmm. Kids lose their love of reading those years. Mm -hmm. Research shows 15 to 30 minutes a day of recreational reading will give you like thousands more words a year, mm -hmm. um, much higher chance on state assessment, higher earning potential, um, literally life expectancies longer because what usually happens is you earn more so you have access to healthcare, all of these kind of mm -hmm. things. Um, I do want to make a note though with right. the reading just uh -huh. because I'm 
somebody might be listening to me and not really sure. There's there's more to it than just saying, here's a book, kid. Read. Right. I was going to go into that too. Yes. So go Sorry. Ahead. No, no, no. No, I was going to ask you to elaborate on that piece. So. It's much like when we take our kids to the library, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm, there's a parent listening right now, there's a teacher listening right now, and they love their own child and they took them to the library when they were four mm-hmm. or five years old. You didn't just walk the kid to the kid's area and walk away. Mm-hmm. You talked to them about the different books. You showed them maybe like Mo Willems or whatever it may mm-hmm. be, and you talked to them about your favorite books. It's those things. You made sure that it was age appropriate. You're mm-hmm. making sure that you scaffolded, like you read a little bit and then released the kid if they could. And mm-hmm. if the child's two years old and they can't read, you probably read to them. Mm-hmm. So when I say recreational reading, I, I do think sometimes and I have to be aware of this and make sure I explain it. You're not just giving a kid a book. Mm-hmm. You're finding the right book in the right hand. You want the kid to be engaged, want the kid to say, I want this book. Right. And then you confer with them. Mm-hmm. You don't need to do anything deep. Just what's your book about? Mm-hmm. Do you like it? What's happening? Mm-hmm. In it? And I have no problem saying this. I adopted this about my second or third to last year at Washington because I really got into reading and I hated that my kids hated reading because mm-hmm. we were reading the same text from 1944 and, and, and some of those, the canon's wonderful. Don't get me mm-hmm. wrong. But my kids weren't reading. They were either spark noting or not reading. Mm-hmm. And so uh, a colleague of mine and I went through a class. was like, why don't we give them some YA novels and why don't we do a lit circle and why don't we have them do a book set, like a book mm-hmm. club essentially. Kids were like stealing books from my class. Right, right. And my principal was getting frustrated because I kept asking for money every year. I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't make them. So I'm sorry they stole the uglies. It's a really good book, apparently. Like, my bad. Um, and that's that's what it was. It showed me like, you give the kids the right book, right. they're going to want to read. Right. So that's what we need. We yeah. need kids to choose their own books. Yeah. We need to make it engaging and we need to just give them time. That's how they become better right. readers. Plus, they'll be better writers. Right. I better stop because I will talk about this for like an hour. <laughs> on, so, on, yeah. On. So, all I'm saying is. Well, I can speak for Brooks. I kept yeah. trying to pick out different books for him. Mm-hmm. And then he kept going back reading just different NFL teams. Like he kept picking different <laughs> books. And I'm like, okay, you know what? That's what he loves. That's what not he what I would pick. It's but fine. you know what? Good on you, dude. Yep. Love it. Yep. Yeah. So, and he reads those all the time. Yep. He loves it. So, and I mean, I, I, I know somebody will be like, well, what grade level is it on? Sure, sure. If a fifth grader, Brooks is in mm-hmm. fifth grade. Yes, he is. If he's reading a kindergarten level book, right, yeah. let's have a conversation. Right. If Brooks is trying to read an 11th grade book and he can't understand it, we got to have a conversation. Mm-hmm. But if a kid engages in a book that's at his level, mm-hmm. his or her level, or maybe a little bit less or mm-hmm. a little bit higher, it's okay. Right. Like, right. Just let the kid get it. Because what right. happens is you enjoy it. It's like working out. Right. It's like whatever it is. If you mm-hmm. want to get healthier, you want to work out more, go work out more. Yeah. If you want to get, be a better reader, read more. Right. It's, I don't, right. it's pretty easy. Yes. So let's yeah, read more. That's great. Yeah, we'll get started on that topic. No, so. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now we know a little bit about your background. We know how passionate you are about recreational reading, for sure, about that. <laughs> I would say so. Um, a, a, so a now, bit, yeah, bit. a little bit. Uh, so now let's delve into a topic that you and I have actually discussed on multiplications, and that's mm-hmm. actually um, important in all facets of life, but we're going to talk about here in education, and particularly with students, and it's building relationships. So it's the importance of relationships, in this case, with students and teachers. So can you talk about um, the importance of building relationships and then how that affects you know, things like grades, truancy, behavior, all those things? Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. I... Uh... I keep talking so much about my own time in the classroom, but I think that's when we learn from things. Um, I came from a much different background, a uh, much different school than um, the first school I taught at Washington High School. I, I grew up, I lived, when we moved out here, went to high school at the Blue Valley School District. Mm-hmm. And so Washington High School is not the same as Blue Valley High right. School. So I think I had this idea of what a classroom was supposed to be like and what a teacher is supposed to be like based upon what I had. Mm-hmm. Um, not to say that I was mean, because I'm just not naturally that kind of person. Right. I'm a pretty, I, I'd like to think I'm a nice, <laughs> kind, approachable human. Right. Um, but I definitely had, for a while, the idea of like, I'm the boss. Mm-hmm. Um, you want respect? Well, then uh, you better respect me first. And I learned pretty quickly that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And people that think that works, um, it typically doesn't work. Mm -hmm. If it does work, it's just because the kid's like, I'm not going to put up the fight. But you're not building an authentic relationship. Mm -hmm. What I really realized was it's okay to show a little respect to kids. It's okay to treat Mm -hmm. them kindly and like they're humans, even Mm -hmm. though they're only 16. Um, 
And then frankly, what I realized was like, just be yourself with them. Like, mm -hmm. like ask them about themselves like you would a friend or a colleague. Mm -hmm. Ask them what they like and what they care about. Um, there's a TED talk that I love. I referenced it uh, last year. We watched it as a district. I sent it out during Pride Press. Shout out to Brooks Jenkins. He showed mm -hmm. it to the middle school. Nice. It's uh, Rita Pearson's uh, Teach Like a Champion. Yes. Did you? I don't know if I think that's the one you had me watch, but go ahead. I yes. may have. I may have. And there's this one part. It's pretty short, and I would recommend everybody to watch it, um, where she says, kids don't learn from people they don't like mm -hmm. or from teachers yep. they don't like. And, you know, I know some people, I always bring this up. Some people are like, that's not true. When I was in college, I had a physics professor that was awful. It's like, stop talking. <laughs> Like that, we're not talking about <laughs> not that. Talking you about paid college, for that class. Right? You, you, were, you were 20 years old. Right. Stop. Stop. Right. I'm talking about when you're eight. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't like your teacher, mm -hmm. you're, you have a less chance of learning. There's right. research that shows that, especially the younger the kid right. is. It's like I said, you're going to have a 17 year old that is going to be fine with not liking a teacher. And they'll mm -hmm. just put their head down because they can't wait to get accepted to some college. And they know they got to maintain their GPA. But I will tell you, I think the learning is probably still less in there as right. well. Right. Building those connections, building those relationships, breaking away from the mantra, which I really have to say, I don't think our teachers have here. I'm so proud of us. Mm -hmm. Like, don't smile till Christmas. Ugh. It's easier to be lenient than to be strict. Yeah. Like, stop. Those right. are old uh, nonsense right. things from a long time ago. Get rid of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Instead, be kind, mm -hmm. be genuine, be jovial. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a couple knuckleheads in your class. Just de-escalate it. Mm -hmm. You don't argue with them. Mm -hmm. Show them that you care. And chances are it'll be what happened to me at Washington, right. which was kids started to not only like me more, but like my class more. Mm -hmm. And I saw something that I sometimes see in my own kids. Um, Max and Ava. There's my shout out for this. Yay. Um, <laughs> which is... I'm sorry, this is not much of a shout out. It's going to get dark for a minute, not dark but sad. <laughs> but like I can tell like the disappointment they have when they disappoint me or how upset right. they get. Not disappointment. It doesn't happen a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm like a pushover, but because I love them so much. But what I'm saying is, is that my students, when I would not get mad, but be like, why did you do that in class today? Why mm -hmm. did you say that to me or to that kid mm -hmm. when you know that I don't stand for that in here? I treat you with respect. So where did that come from? Mm -hmm. And the crestfallen look on their yeah, face I'm telling you and it's yeah. like that's because right. and then saying like I think we're good I think we're good and I don't think you meant it so if you mm -hmm. can say sorry I think we can move on mm -hmm. and they'll immediately say sorry we fist bump and we're back inside mm -hmm. like that's the thing that gets them learning that's right. the thing and, and yeah it's 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 complex I'm not mm -hmm. trying to say it, kids are right. easy because they're not I taught I taught at schools that I could tell they were not but I do think that if you can try to connect with them genuinely mm -hmm treat them with respect, fairness, mm -hmm. and kindness. Mm -hmm. A lot of times. That was my, this I believe. That was your this I believe, that's right. Episode yes. one. That was episode one. Yes, so you haven't listened to that one. But yeah, no, I, <laughs> I, I completely hear you. Yeah. I agree with you. It's kind of my parenting style too, so. Okay. <laughs> We're aligned on that one. <laughs> right, right, right. Sorry, kids. <laughs> or you're welcome, kids. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so um, now we're going to do something fun. So oh. we, we went through the question part, the, you know, our standard questions, but now mm. we're going to go back to something we ask each of our guests. That's and you right. ask me as well. That's right. So we're going to give you a choice of questions. Of the four questions. Yeah, you're going to have four questions and you can choose one. So I'm going to read them here. Okay. So you can choose one. Okay. Tell us the funniest story about yourself as a high school student. Mm. So give some examples. It could be like a senior prank, like what Martin Altieri did. That was a good one. Yes. You could tell us the most embarrassing thing that happened to you in school. Mm. You could talk to us about the meanest teacher you had and why, which is what I did, Miss Bannisdale. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask Mrs. her name Bannisdale. was. Mrs. Yeah, Bannisdale. she's probably <laughs> listening to this crying. Yeah. No, I, I doubt it. She was, she was quite old. When I was in first grade and I'm <laughs> a spring chicken, so I won't say exactly. But okay. So and then lastly, what was the most important so trouble you got into as a high school student? I'm sorry. We got dark there. Just yeah, for we the did. We that did. was I'm the sorry. dark I'm comment. hoping you just, yeah. Just sorry, Miss Vance, if you're still alive. Um, She's hot. <laughs> oh, my God. Like you're so sure. You don't know. She'd be like 120. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, so choose. So, and then the last one, what was the sorry most important trouble you got? What was the most trouble you got into okay. as a high school student? You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go with, and I think it's because it's perfect to talk about here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to link it to what we were just talking about with relationships. Okay. It's amazing how we forget, or I'm sorry, mm -hmm. we don't forget and we remember even more sometimes than our best teachers, our mean teachers. Yep. And mm -hmm. I got one. Okay. You got one too. I'm going to go Let's with the mean it. teacher. Yep. Second okay. grade. Okay. Eight-year-old Miles. 
moved, uh, we actually were living overseas at the time. Um, my dad had a job over there and we, we, we moved over there and um, was living in Saudi Arabia. Um, mm -hmm. And there was a, a family tragedy and we had to come back. Mm -hmm. And so we came back to the East Coast and we were living there for a while and you got to go to school. And so they enrolled me in school. And I, I, I feel like, I mean, I was, it was a long time ago, obviously. So I want to say it was like winterish, maybe like February, March. Um, and I'm, I'm in school and they put me with a lady. Mrs. Henderson. Oh, I can tell I look uh, on your face. Yeah, I like how you're, you used to be like you're upset with just the name, but like, <laughs> well, yes, the name, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, I'm actually, the pain. I know I'm about to start crying because I'm tear. reliving the memories. Uh, <laughs> she was so mean. She was so mean. I still remember one time I said to her, good morning, Mrs. Henderson. She said, what's good about it? And I was like, who the heck is that? Oh. Who says it to an eight-year-old? <laughs> and I still remember going to another teacher. This was back like early nineties where they had like that really big, like, um, open concept thing in schools, mm -hmm. if you remember. And I like walked up to um, a teacher, another teacher, another class, she just seemed really nice. And I would like tugged on her skirt and I was like, can you be my teacher? Oh. <laughs> I was like, literally. Oh. And she was like, oh no, let me walk you back. I'm like, no, please, no, 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 no. And she like walked back and and I still remember Miss Henderson was like, oh, where'd you go off to? And then it like turned, she's a liar. She's just, <laughs> mm. So anyway, she was so mean to me. I don't know if it's because I was new. I don't know if she, I don't know. She just didn't like me. And and for the record, I know people were probably listening. It was like, well, if you act like you act now, you're probably all over the place. Just so you know, I was actually a very good student about that stuff. I sat there. I did what I needed to do. Um, but yeah, Miss mm -hmm. Henderson, oh, I almost did not build that relationship with you. No. And you know what? Maybe I should thank her, though, because that's why, number one, I think I'm a nice, kind person. Okay. I believe in building relationships and not treating anybody badly. You how not to be. How, yeah, she was a good non-example. Exactly. Okay. There's and maybe that's why I'm in public that. education. Okay. Because, I mean, nothing hurts me more than the idea. Yeah, yeah like look that. at me putting a positive spin yeah. on Miss Henderson. She still is terrible, though. <laughs> and even, even if it was, like, she still owes me, like, therapy for something. <laughs> I, I, I need back pay to go see somebody about it. Oh, that's great. But yep, that was, that was, okay. uh, that was Ms. Henderson, newest teacher ever. Okay. Second well, grade. I, I don't like ending it on a negative note, but I do feel like you put a positive spin, so we're going to get, and I, I think that's going to wrap up I, this fifth episode. Uh, I can't believe it. You did a great episodes. job. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if I'm as good as you and Martin and uh, Dr. Like Penrose. It. Yes. Top three. Yeah. But you know what I do think? What? I think. Becky Jones has got some work. Yep, she better be ready. She's she's week. on deck. Or like next episode, not next, next week. Episode. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Two weeks. Two, Two weeks. weeks from now. So that's it. So as always, for more updates and stories on Lansing USD 469, you can visit us at www.usd469.net. And if you haven't already, download the free Lansing USD 469 mobile app on Apple and Android. The app allows you to be the first to know all of the fantastic things happening in our district. Such as snow days. Such as being the first to know about <laughs> snow days. That's, and they're coming. I'm, they're coming. We're, yeah. It's going to be a little chilly tonight, I heard. I know. I don't think it's snow, but it's but it, it could happen. <laughs> it could. Yeah. A couple uh, if you like our content, want to stay up to date on our latest episodes, please follow us wherever you're listening to us and leave a review to help others find us and learn more about our great, amazing yes. district. We are streaming on. Are you ready? Got a list here. Oh Added gosh. more to it. Oh my I know. gosh. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, YouTube, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and CastBox. I didn't even know CastBox existed. It's a thing. Are you just putting fake on things on I am on not. Here? I promise. Look it up. You're welcome, CastBox. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> CastBox. They're like, that, yeah. that, that, that nerve of that guy. <laughs> Get the lawyers ready. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm small time, buddy. Don't waste your money. Um, if you would like to be a guest on the podcast or provide a topic for upcoming podcasts, please send an email to sharon.burns at usd469.net. Um, by the way, yeah. I think I didn't mess up anything with emails. It is a miracle. Website. It is a miracle. I'm proud of you. I don't know if you call it a miracle. That's a little you. bold. That's a, <laughs> little, that's a little bit much to call it a miracle. Okay. That is a wrap on episode number five. Five. Woo! Thanks for listening. Bye, everybody. Bye.